the Arch of Constantine. The Arch of Constantine is located along the Via Triumphalis in Rome, and it is situated between the Flavian Amphitheater, better known as the Colosseum, and the Temple of Venus and Roma. The arch is about 20 meters high, 25 meters wide, and seven meters deep. There are three arches, with the middle arch being 12 meters high. There are identical inscribed marble panels in the center on each side of the arch that read, to the emperor Caesar Flavius Constantinus, the greatest, pious, fortunate, the Senate and people of Rome, by inspiration of divinity and his own great mind, with his righteous arms on both the tyrant and his faction, in one instant in rightful battle, he avenged the Republic dedicated this arch as a memorial to his military victory. The arch is a huge conglomerate of Imperial Roman sculpture as many parts of it were recycled from earlier first and second century CE monuments, notably the Luna marble panels of the attic, which were taken from the arch of Marcus Aurelius. Constantine the first, AKA Constantine the Great, was Roman emperor from 306 to 337 CE. After his father's death, Constantine continued to build a reputation as a man capable of rapid and decisive action when in 307 CE, he attacked the Franks. Slowly, he gained the respect of the army, demonstrating to his men even those older and more experienced, they could trust him. Constantine easily defeated Maxentius in the Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312 CE, who fled back to Rome. However, before reaching the city, he fell into the river and drowned. His body was discovered the next morning among the corpses of many others. Constantine immediately assumed complete control of the West. This battle was so important to Constantine the Great and his followers that the central piece on the Arch of Constantine had an inscription of the importance of this battle in the Constantine's reign of power. It was the son of Constantius, Constantine, who would one day rise to defeat all challenges to the throne and reunite the split empire, moving the capital away from old Rome and build a new Eastern capital, a capital that one day would bear his name, Constantinople. In 337 CE, Constantine fell ill and died. He had ruled for 31 years. He was buried at the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople, leaving his empire in the hands of his three sons, Constantine II, Constantius II, and Constans. Architectural features. A triple arch faced in marble. It has engaged columns resting on bases that depict captives. In the spandrels are figures of victory while other personifications include the seasons and river gods. Friezes of Constantine's ad locutio and distribution of largesse appear on the north side. His siege of Verona and the battle of at the Milvian Bridge appear on the south side. While this program, like that of other Roman arches, celebrates imperial authority and victory, it has been read by Pierce as Constantine's appropriation of the achievements of earlier emperors. The iconology of this picture starts with this description. There are reliefs from the south side that show two roundels with two different significant events that occurred to Constantine. Underneath that is the frieze that has a close style to symmetry by having almost the same amount of people on either side 
of the centerpiece. The dark brick behind the reliefs makes the reliefs seem to pop out more and gives the viewer an easier look. The comparison states that in comparison to the idealized naturalism of the earlier sculptural elements, for example, the roundels, the thick, bold outlines of the Constantinian finger, figures render them remarkably legible to passersby. The Arch of Constantine compared to other arches in, mater in the material from class shows that these arches were made with immense detail, showing the viewers who their hero was and depicting their life and how impactful it was to the people who ruled. The analysis is that iconology is a hard analysis to make, but the Arch of Constantine to me was built during this time to show the people of Rome who their previous ruler was and how his sacrifices led these people to peace and to worship Constantine the Great for everything he has done. The iconology of this picture starts with this description, is that the relief sculpture on the right seems to have a more unnatural style rather than the typical naturalism style of other Roman relief sculptures. And the lines on the tunics of the people in the relief sculptures on the right are very deep, almost giving off a cartoonish style. Uh, the left sculpture shows a more naturalistic style like that of most other Roman relief sculptures on their arches. The comparison states that these relief sculptures are of a drastically different style and narrative content when compared with the spoliated sections on the left picture. Constantine's relief sculptures on the right feature squat and blocky figures that are more abstract than they are naturalistic. The relief sculptures on the Arch of Titus are more natural with less abstract lines on the figures. The Arch of Titus also has more detail on the relief sculptures compared to the Arch of Constantine. The analysis that I think this relief sculpture on the Arch of Constantine on the right picture was made during this time to show his people about change how times are different and how his people will need to adapt as time goes on to maintain a high status and high power. The significance of the Arch of Constantine is the Arch of Constantine has a huge significance in the Roman society because of how impactful Constantine the Great was with his determination and loyalty to Rome and his people. The arch celebrates victory of Emperor Constantine at the Battle of Milvian Bridge. For six years, the two had reigned as co-emperors. The battle, this battle brought an end to nearly a century of war, of civil war and cemented Constantine's place as the sole ruler of the Western Roman Empire. The decorations represent three centuries of imperial history. It has, been, it has long been clear to scholars that much of the arch's sculpture came from monuments dedicated to earlier emperors, Trajan, Hadrian, and Marcus Aurelius. The winged victory figures flanking the central passageway and several reliefs inside the central passageway some of which depict the sun god's soul. This could mean that the viewers are meant to see their emperor in a high state of mind, victorious and courageous, giving his people a confidence boost and happy introduction to that part of Rome. Having it depict the sun god's soul could tell the viewer that there is always light at the end of the tunnel if you are willing to never give up in reaching the end goal. It could also tell the viewer that there is no obstacle that should be able to outshine you, that you are the shining star that can overcome anything. Conclusion. Overall, 
The Arch of Constantine was a huge monument dedicated to one of the most influential emperors of Rome, Emperor Constantine the Great, who ruled from 306 to 337, overcoming many competitors and conquering neighboring territories to reunite the empire and take complete control of Rome. The arch itself depicts those heroic adventures and violent battles and sacrifices by sculpting them on the arch in different places to signify to his people his immense significance to Rome. The artistic and architectural features of the Arch of Constantine are similar in certain areas of the arch, like some relief sculptures and friezes. However, there are parts that are very different from other arches in Rome, such as the jagged lines on one of the relief sculptures, giving it a cartoon look. It was always, it was also a very big arch compared to other arches like that of the Arch of Titus. After his death, his dedication to Rome was fully seen and understood by his people through the Arch of Constantine, which depicted certain crucial events during the reign of Emperor Constantine, showing his heroism and dedication to Rome and his people. This is my work cited. Thank you for watching and have a happy summer.